Hey, this is Morning Perfect Base, and I hope that you are having a good morning. You will notice I am somewhere different this morning. I am in the nether. I was playing a little bit with Diana, and she wanted to go to the old base. So uh, I had to pop over here. I'm, I'm on my way back. I figure, why not play? Oh, shit. There's a very good reason. So this is Morning Perfect Base. I hope you're having a good morning. I'm going to cover a couple topics today in my quest to bring you um, calm, inoffensive moves, something, 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 and not die to freaking gas. As always, not dying of gas is much higher on my list of priorities than you may have assumed. Uh, so anyway, we're talking about um, dark matter, Josh Weed's divorce, uh, and YouTube. You see... All right, I killed a different guest just before I started recording, and its stuff should be over here. Anyway, uh, Polygon did a um, an interview with uh, YouTube's head of business and the exec who, the exec who oversees creators. His name's uh, Robert Kinstill, I think, something like that. I have no idea where that XP went. Um, well, it's a write-off then. I'm glad I'm not dead. And he talked about how the the spam content farms that I, I talked about, I think, in a uh, Minecraft News for Adults, how that was the reason for the changes to YouTube's monetization policy from a couple of months ago, and not, um, I say right off, but I really just don't let things go. How those farms for spammed content, the creation of videos that match trends, even if they were nonsense, to draw in, hey, naive users, usually kids, um, algorithmically created content designed to manipulate YouTube's uh, search directions were ooh that's not safe do I have any I don't alright well let's just keep on trucking uh, that was the cause of the changes to the monetization policy and not douchebags like YouTuber uh, children who make millions of dollars because they're watched by other children uh, Jake L Lloyd Paul Jake Paul I kind of forget whichever one wasn't in a phantom menace but Really, YouTube shifts reasons for whatever's convenient for them. They're a bad platform, and yeah, I'm very aware of the irony. Uh, who haven't set consistent guidelines for people who monetize with them. That's the people who make themselves money, yes, but then also YouTube money. Um, they never set clear guidelines, and they act like they're completely non-communicative with the people who make the content that makes them money. Like, I'm, I'm subscribed to many a true newer many a true nerd he's a, a British youtuber uh, and his videos show up in my suggested bar sometimes but not not always in fact kind of rarely he puts he posts content like two videos a day and it's not always up there meanwhile I get consistent shows whenever Jim fucking Sterling uh, gets new content and let me tell you that guy is like a million times more offensive than many a true nerd I am baffled by that um, whoop Anyway, it's just weird, and that's kind of the the elimination, the exclusion from automated um, search, automated promotion, basically, that YouTube does, and it's weird that they do that, and that obviously happens, but the dude is saying that, oh, no one could possibly know what YouTube's algorithms are doing except for us. How could you possibly know that? Well, people live this shit, dude. Like people see what's in front of them. They see the results of your algorithms and they know that something's not right with it. So don't act like it's impossible for people, for people to see what's in front of their faces. That's the chest I was looking for. Because we can see that. In the vernacular, y'all ain't slick. We see this shit. Anyway, next story is uh, NGC 1052 DF2. I'm not sure if that's how that's all pronounced, but that's... Uh, it is a galaxy that apparently is missing dark matter. It should have more dark matter, but it doesn't have it for some reason. Uh, most galaxies, like we can judge the mass of a galaxy by its rotational speed around its, its core. Um, NGC 1052, um, the rotation, the mass which causes that rotation is apparently all attributable to actual stars. But in most galaxies, stars make up a very small percentage of the matter. The rest of it's attributable to, we don't know what, and we call that we don't know what dark matter. Um, it's matter that doesn't interact with regular matter. We can only measure it 
by by its mass that we see in other places. Oh yeah, I forgot this place kind of sucks. Anyway, so the Yale team that noticed this began looking for other galaxies like that. Uh, these are galaxies that are so thin we can actually ooh gotta eat. We can actually see through them. Uh, a singular mystery is intriguing, and the article I linked definitely kind of plays that angle. But then it goes, no, actually, once we saw this weird thing that we don't know how it happens. We looked for more of them, and there were more of them. There are more of these weird, diffuse galaxies that violate the rules that we understand make up galaxies. Uh, and it's super cool. It is so cool that there is so much about the galaxy that we still just do not understand. Um, like, there's no opinion here. There's no interpretation. I honestly don't know enough about astrophysics to offer an opinion. Uh, I just think it's cool. Next story, uh, Josh Weed. Josh Weed is a member of the Church of Latter-day Saints. He is a Mormon. Uh, back in 2012, he came out as gay and he proposed to his wife. Uh, Loli? Lolly, I think? I've only read it. I haven't heard it. Uh, he's been gay since he was a teen and the marriage was, was national news. Um, putting this green stuff in this chest. Yeah, just to keep it here until I can do something more productive with it. Um, ah, shit, the nether goes in here. So, uh, since then, th their, their plan was to have a heterosexual marriage as God intended, and he would deny his gay urges, and they would just have a heterosexual marriage, but he would just be gay. And I think that's, it's noble in its own way, uh, but they just announced in January they're getting a divorce. Um, you know, Josh's, the marriage was a pretext for homophobic parents to push or punish, like physically beat uh, gay children for not attempting to be in a, a heterosexual marriage. And like because of that and just on general principles, there's a lot of schadenfreude over the, the divorce. Um, I respect that they as devout people tried to walk the path of unfulfilling romance and sex that straight evangel evan evangelicals uh, prescribe like I appreciate that they made the attempt to do a very hard thing for their faith um, although I have to note that those straight evangelicals will never have to walk that path by their faith which is convenient it's sad when marriages end um, it, people don't like admitting they made mistakes uh, getting a divorce is very much like that and uh, it's a blow to the pride and folks work hard to admit mistakes but Mistakes can also be a way to say that, you know, you, you tried something. It's a way to say that you tried and dared and, and you challenged yourself. And maybe people can't admit they made mistakes. Uh, maybe those people never took any risks, you know? Um, they may have gambled away some pocket change or, or l counted some acceptable losses, but no real consequential risks that folks with with actual character take and um, for what it's worth Josh Weed and his wife Lolly seem to have character when I was at the Academy we were forced to memorize the man in the arena it's attributed to Teddy Roosevelt and it says that that's not the critic who counts or the person who points out how the strong man stumbled but the doer of deeds whose face is covered with sweat and dust and blood who strives greatly and if he fails fails knowing that his place will never be with the cold and timid souls that know neither victory nor defeat. Um, I'm not inclined to, to criticize Josh Weed. Um, I admit having, feeling slightly vindicated that that, that sort of a marriage um, doesn't work, that it's hard to beat your homosexuality. Um, it's sad that people get a divorce but, um, I don't know, even that quote's the kind of quote that old people feed young people and they need them to die for them. Young people with optimism and hope and uh, tons, tons of idealism. I'd, I'd rather a world, honestly, where people believe in those kinds of things instead of adults who are cynical and laughing at Josh and Lolly Weed. I mean, and also, fuck, fuck those two guys for the damage they did to the LGBT community, but good on them for trying to repair some of that damage. I don't know. People are complicated. And the fact that people hate gay people so much sucks. And I feel like I'd much rather shout at those people 
then take pleasure in, you know, Josh Weeds and Lobby Weeds. I don't want to say misfortune, sadness, loss, loss.jpg. Next story, The Equalizer. This is <laughs> it's a trailer for a movie starring Denzel Washington. Um, you know, I kind of watched the original Equalizer, I think on A&E. It may have been an early reboot because the Equalizer was kind of an older dude. Anyway, uh, it was kind of like leverage for the 80s with like one special forces guy and they did a, a sequel movie in 2018. I had a bed downstairs, God damn it, Chris. Uh, the new Equalizer movie looks like it's kind of a, a vengeance film, like the new Death Wish, like the old Death Wish. Uh, it's a big, ugly thing with old guy action stars. I'm not... I'm not really sold on. I don't like vengeance films. Uh, I like Denzel Washington. I like Bruce Willis. I think they're cool guys. It's just that a story where someone is avenging a person is, is cynical and selfish. Um, like our protagonists aren't saving anyone. They're not doing anything good. Literally, they're they're killing bad people, sure, and maybe those bad people would have killed innocent people, but like. Our protagonists didn't give a shit one second before their own loved ones were killed. Uh, they're selfish assholes who just go out and murder people to make themselves feel better. Um, and otherwise, they don't give a shit about anything that happens beyond the end of their own nose until it affects them. I couldn't think of a more short-sighted and vicious character. I can think of more vicious characters, more short-sighted characters. I would be hard-pressed to think of one which was both more vicious and more short-sighted. Um, they could have stopped the evil and general principles before all that shit happened. But I guess they had a wife and kids. I, I just don't think that that morality holds with me. I think it's bullshit. So, The Equalizer is always kind of different from that. So I ended up watching the video and that's what it is. His friend dies. And The Equalizer usually does give a shit. He, doesn't, he helps out people, I think kind of for money, but also on general principles. Um, that's why I like him. That's why I like the show. But now he's just one of his friends died, so now he's killing a bunch of mobsters or criminals or whatever. I don't know. It's it sucks. Like, how do you get invested in that? How do you just say I'm gonna watch a movie where a guy kills people really cool? Like, like I think I think you were looking at the thinnest justification for violence porn. I mean, stories about people who are highly skilled at murder who then go out to kill tons of mooks. And then, like, a boss bad guy are are cynical, played out, and they're inherently poorly written. Ah, god damn it. Who's this? What's this? Where's this? Ah, you piece of shit. Okay, he dead. Um, I mean, what's crazy is that Taken reinvigorated the, the, the revenge, the vengeance movie. But, like, it was about saving people. There was a point to that. That all served a purpose. I don't know, the, the original Equalizer ran for four seasons... Leverage ran for five, and it had people who had different skills working together to do this kind of stuff. Like, I don't know if they killed some people or not, but um, you get the impression they could have. And I want to say there was one guy there who actually was really good at violence. And he regretted that. He thought violence was bad, but he could still do it for the right reason. Like, how is that not a great hook? I guess it's harder to write. Anyway, I'm a cheap bastard. I buy my comics from Discount Bins. This is Disco Comics. Today's comic is Loki number one, Agent of Asgard, from April 1st, 2014. Written by Al Ewing and art by Lee Garbett. So Loki died in the Marvel Siege event and then he was reborn as a kid. I don't know if this is like the, from that or if he was reborn, whether the time that he was a kid from that he died and then was reborn again. Man, I can't keep track. I'm, I'm old. I'm an old person. So the story here is that he's trying to erase the stories of him to break the chains of fate, which make him, condemn him to be the god of evil from myth, which is fascinating. Um, it's a good story about a teenage Loki fighting, you know, the Avengers with cleverness and magical artifacts. There's Hawkeye being so terrible at a fishing game that he's being, uh, a fishing video game that he's being chased by the police. Uh, there's Loki talking about writing slash fic. Loki and Thor having one of those heart-to-hearts, which uh, is going to get old one day. It's just not going to get old any day within my lifetime. That's how it is. It's good, and it's a lot of fun. This thing ran for like 17 issues. No surprise it was such a short run. Um, I might, I'm might, i probably going to pick up the singles because they're probably um, going to be cheaper than Marvel trades because Marvel trades are 
infamously expensive, but it seems like a good series. It seems like it's a run that's written all by one guy. So um, I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of finding someone who has a good take and then following them to the mat on that. So I will keep you updated if I decide to buy on that. Maybe a cool thing to do is that after every month or so, um, I choose one of these series to follow up on and to kind of finish out um, a comic for, for Disco Comics. So we will see about that. Uh, anyway, that is it for today. I think I made a lot of progress cl clearing this hilltop. I, you can see I cleared that one over there and the one that I was working on the other corner that has been cleared out. I need to rip up the floor, um, replace it with gr replace it with dirt that will become grass. And then I need to ba -ba -ba, put some torches in it for, for first for starters and then actually put some livestock and some trees in it. So anyway, for reals, uh, until I get a good sign off.